going to say one of the first hires you'll probably do in your real estate career is having a transaction coordinator. I have one of those too. So let me tell you, like I don't do all this by myself. I do not do all this by myself. I was going to say I could probably do more. some lovely ladies here today cleaning yes cleaning and if you're new you might you might be like well listen uh -uh, i can't do that but today's video we're gonna talk about you want to get to a point where you're gonna have to need to not do everything yourself to be more productive it just doesn't make sense for you to spend time on activities that don't produce. Picking up my sign, up my sign, my new signs. Yes, because I'm headed to one of my properties that got staged on Monday. I want to change out this sign with a newer sign, switch out some light bulbs. Well, first I'm gonna head to uh, have a closing today and I want to check on the property before I leave because agents are not as allowed to attend the walkthrough. So I'm gonna go there first, head to my other property, then head to closing. So let me hop in the car and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about that. So, hold on. Okay, finally got out the house. Leaving way later than I expected. But, okay, yeah, but should still be good. Uh, no, I will be good, 10.30. I'm gonna have just enough time to get to closing. Okay, but I wanted to make this video because yeah, as I was leaving, I'm like, yeah, I'm just, just grateful. <laughs> grateful that I ain't got to clean, like. And I could, the thing is I could do it, but, it would not be the best use of my time. And like, even if I love cleaning, like my sister loves cleaning. So I guess if it's therapeutic, you could do it, but it still wouldn't be a good use of your time. And not even just cleaners, I'm relating that to yesterday and I'll include this post. So I have a client care coordinator, but outside of that, well, yeah, bringing her on has helped me a lot. Has also helped her a lot. She actually used to be a past client, got her real estate license. So while she's working on her business, she's helping me. Like yesterday, she went and picked up like three closing baskets for me while I was at a walkthrough. Like when your business picks up for you, you can't be everywhere at once. You're going to have to not try to do everything yourself. I'm sure it's easy to say, well, yeah, when business picks up, but there is gonna come a time where you're gonna be uncomfortable and you're gonna have to make that decision, trusting that it's gonna work out. So it's not like you're gonna go from doing everything yourself to everything is just like money is flowing, clothes are flowing, okay, and now let me hire somebody. There's gonna be a transition period where you have, you, you see, you have stuff going on, but you see how it could be, it's gonna start picking up, but you're not quite sure you wanna, you know, can I, can I afford it? Can I hire somebody? Can I get a transaction coordinate? You're not sure you're going to have to lean into it. You're gonna have to jump. Just finished reading Steve Harvey's book, Jump, really liked it. You're going to have to lean into it and jump so you can get to that next level. I'm gonna say one of the first hires you'll probably do in your real estate career is having a transaction coordinator. I have one of those too. So let me tell you, like I don't do all this by myself. I do not do all this by myself. I was gonna say I could probably do more, but no, not the way I have been feeling tired, exhausted, and drained with all these people and the help that I do have. Like, no, that's another reason. I, the burnout, you, mm -mm, no. It's, it's not worth it to me to keep money in my pocket 
and be burned out trying to do everything myself and it still wouldn't work because you're gonna end up dropping balls you can't do everything yourself and again you have to weigh it against what you have going on like even now like things are gonna be slowing down a little bit because i haven't been feeding my pipeline as much and it's been intentionally i've been referring out a lot of business and i want to take this time to assess okay what's next what there's big projects that i want to work on so and i'm still gonna keep these people in place to handle some of these tasks so that i can focus my attention in other areas so who do all do I have on my team? First, it was a transaction coordinator. I'm gonna say that's gonna be your easiest hire as a real estate agent because they take care of all of your paperwork. And no, that's not really the because, but that's what they do. It's the easiest hire because they don't get paid until you close. So it's not like you have to set a salary aside. They get paid at closing. So that is gonna be a first hire and so well worth it. I do recommend you, you know, you know your first couple of closings, you know how to do it and what to do and how it works, but get a transaction coordinator. Let them handle the paperwork and all of that. Like I still write my own offer. There are some agents that have a transaction coordinator or somebody that writes offers for them. I tag in my transaction coordinator after we're already um, under contract or when I have a new listing. She's getting the listing documents together and getting it uploaded in the system. One of the best decisions ever and especially one of the best decisions for the transaction coordinator that I have because I've had I'm gonna say a couple. One was more, I was using her more like a VA and I needed more and she could do more, but she just wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't connecting, which is fine. So I went on to another person and kudos to him. He built his business to where he could step away from it and put it, give it to somebody else. But I don't think he did the transition very well. I mean, the person that he transitioned it to was cool, but yeah, he didn't transition it very well. So I ended up getting somebody that I know personally. And not that it has to be somebody you know personally, but it just it just worked out how it worked out. She was an agent, she was killing it as an agent and decided to pull back so she could focus more on her family. And I just know her work ethic and it's great. And she's on it and I see the emails that she sends out and I'm like, oh my gosh, like such a value added, like things that I would do that I would have to do because I know she got it. She's so point there, you may have to go through a couple to get there, but don't let it discourage you if one doesn't work out. It's all about communication and finding somebody that you're gonna have a good fit with. The next hire I did, not everybody's gonna do this, but I did was a video editor because that is my main source of marketing. And video editing, while I do love it, Again, back to this, the reason for this video, like just because you love it and you're good at it. Well, I'm not as good as my video editor, but I was I was doing pretty okay. It's time consuming and it takes time. And maybe if that was the only thing I was doing, it'd be fine, but trying to do that plus build my real estate business, yeah. I mean, it was to the point where I was all weekend long some nights, if I missed it or I didn't edit for the weekend, I would be up to 4 a.m. in the morning, Monday, because my video goes out on Tuesdays. If you don't subscribe to that channel, check it out, Soul by Nat, it'll be in here. I would be up to 4 a.m., 3, 4 a.m. on a Monday night morning to get to make sure my video went up on Tuesday because I'm serious about it. I made that commitment back in September 2018. I was gonna post one video a week and have not missed uh, upload since. And at the time of this recording, it is August 25th, 2022. Uh, so my second was a video editor. And yeah, that was a commitment too, but that was kind of a, that was a no brainer for me because I saw what, what it was doing, what videos were doing. And I just, I just knew I couldn't keep operating like that and, and doing all my videos. So that was a great hire. Shout out to Zoe. Zoe actually, my video editor, you know, he has his, his business, his business savvy going on and connected me with a VA and uber beneficial there. Like there are just things that like, 
I'm a, like just went before I was leaving, somebody contacted me on a listing and they're like, I just submitted an offer. And I'm like, do I drop all my stuff, take out my laptop to go ahead and get this offer uploaded? Well, the system that I use or I have, I've just started using it as I upload my offers to Google Drive and I share it with the seller so the seller can look and see offer number one, two, three, four. Do I do that? Or I'm like, no. Forwarded it to my VA. Good morning, can you please add this addition, uh, you know, the next offer in the folder? So I know she's taking care of it. It's just things, especially there are some days, especially like this week, I am on the road every day this week. There are things that I just, yeah, it's just, I'd be running myself ragged trying to drive and go to appointments and lift property and take calls and answer questions and do everything myself. You can't do everything yourself. So rewind, my VA is a VA. She's virtual, so she is not local. I guess you could have a local VA, but she's virtual, right? So I, I did, I wanted somebody that was in person, like local, physical, that can help me day-to-day -day tasks, essentially be another me. And not another me as like, she has to be just like me, but be able to fill in physically where I can't fill in. Um, so for example, if a listing sign needs to be dropped off, she'll take that. A lockbox, she'll take that. There was a client, where the client, she actually notarized documents for last night. Actually, her husband and, and, and her, her and her husband. When I took her listing, when she wanted to schedule photos, I wasn't available that day. And, but she was. So my client care coordinator filled in. So I brought her on as my executive assistant and client care coordinator. So she is in person. And what does she do? So she does, like with this listing, she will contact and get feedback buyer searches like I have one uh, prospective buyer um, that we are looking for basically a luxury property and we're checking on a lot of properties well she's checking on a lot of properties they're sending I'm driving I am on the road I cannot you know it, it was driving me mad because for a while it was all on me it was all on me to do so you know, you don't have to have a VA and a client care coordinator. It just works for me. To have both, you could have a VA that's local. Then it wouldn't be a VA, virtual assistant. Yeah, you could have an assistant that is doing the task. Just make it work for you, make it work for you. But I would say your first hire is a transaction coordinator. Uh, and I ramble a lot. I'm pulling up to the house or the community where I have the closing for today. This builder does not allow agents to attend walkthroughs, um, which I think sucks and I really don't care for this builder. The house is still, they'll give you a, a good product, but they don't give you any of the warm fuzzy feelings at all. The on-site agent sucks. The, um, well, for this location, the on-site agent sucks and I don't like their com commission. They pay reduced commissions. They suck for that. And then, yeah, they don't let agents attend, and I think that sucks. Speaking of that, my client care coordinator, she has a closing with this same builder on Friday. And yeah, her client, it's her first time buying a home. It's my client's first time buying a home too. They got questions, but they don't have their agent there to ask those questions. So I think that sucks, and builders should do that. Yeah, essentially, rambled on a lot, but the two biggest things I want you to get just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you need to be doing it. Yeah, it's not a great use of your time. Breaking down in numbers wise, identify what your hourly rate is. Let's say your hourly rate is 50, 100, $200. If your hourly rate, let's just go with $100. If your hourly rate is $100 and you can hire $100 an hour, right? And you could hire an admin for $10 an hour or 15 or whatever that rate is. It makes more sense for you to hire that admin versus you take the time for that hour to do that task. It just financially does not 
makes sense and is a good use of your time. That time that you're taking doing that minor task, minute task, you know what I mean, is time that you could have spent bringing in more business because that's your job. You go get the meat, you go get the meat. I don't know, but you get it, right? And they make sure the meat's gonna be good. But they don't have anything to cook if you don't go get the meat. Mm. Yes, yes. So that's one and then two, there is gonna come a point in your career as you're building where you're gonna have to lean in and trust. Okay, I'm not sure, but I'm feeling like this is gonna work and just go for it, go for it. And I say as you're building, you're gonna keep building. So even if you, once you reach this point, you're gonna keep building some more. So even where I'm at now, I feel like, okay, there's a next level. So I need to lean into and do something that makes me uncomfortable. Growth happens outside of your comfort zone. All right, I'm gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna go check out this house. Hopefully I can get in. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please give this video a thumbs up. It's free and I appreciate you. Please share it with somebody else that's in the business, whether they're in real estate, they're working on a side hustle, um, entrepreneur of some way. It doesn't have to be an entrepreneur. They could just be going after that next thing. They're going to that next level. They're, they want to take that next jump and they might need a little, little push. All right, guys, have a positive, peaceful, and productive day. Let's get it.